Magnesium. Magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. So we've got 60 in here. That means 60 in there, meaning we've got 120. And we now have enough power because we've added a lot, a lot, I say a lot, but of steam engines, right? The steam engines are now giving us, we have a capacity of like 3,600. That's including the wind turbines up there and up there, which means we have more power for production. So if we've got 120 here, we need to find out where the magnesium goes into, which I think it is the foundry. Maybe it's not the foundry. Wait, no, it is. Because it, it, is, it makes sulfur-free iron, which is 30 crushed stone and 30 magnesium granules. And this is giving me... Oh, this is giving me crushed magnesium. So maybe it's the crusher we need. Aha, it is. So it's the crusher we need. Which literally is a one-to-one -one ratio. So we have officially now got Mark II belts anyway. So if we was to remove this here, just grab ourselves a merger and place that here, like there. Mark one into there, bringing out that 60. This 60 can then literally come along here, merge with this 60 to make a 120. And then we're going to need two crushers. So let's put these down here, maybe. Maybe there. Or can I push them back one more? Yeah, we'll put them, put them in line with the crushers here. And then I can get a splitter and then get you to go straight into here. If I line it up correctly. And then I can just double this. Add another splitter. Actually, I don't need another splitter there. We can just put that straight into a mark one into this input. I'm going to just do that. That's... 60 in there, 60 in there. This will make my magnesium granules. This will give me 80 in total, which will then... I guess we might even need the granules for maybe something else of a recipe I don't know. So let's go into special and get the awesome sink storage mark one and place that here. And we'll get ourselves a merger to merge these two together, like so. And then that's going to go into the... Wait, maybe I should get a splitter, like... Nope, that needs to be a Mark 2. And a Mark 2 in there. But yeah, that should do that. So basically what we've done here is I've got the iron ore from over on the south side of the desert, which is two lines of 120, which then goes into these crushes here, which then makes the normal stuff in the sorter, right? So these two crushes go into one sorter, which we've done plenty of, hence why I didn't need to show you what I've done here again. Because we've kind of done these over and over and over again. Now, I think this might be the third time because we did like a starter factory. Then we did this kind. No, oh, maybe what that was the starter factory. No, that was the starter factory over there, right? So it's basically the same process we've done down there. We're just now bringing in more ore to double. Very much similar to what we did with the copper on the lower level. And this floor in here does have an underfloor in as well in case we want to utilize it. And right now, maybe I need to because... This is giving me crushed iron, right? And crushed iron needs to go into the the um, the foundry, right? With the magnesium. Where's the foundry? Oh, it's there. So this goes into sulfur-free iron. Magnesium granules here. So we're going to put down two foundries. We're going to consume 60 of the magnesium that we're making here. We're making 80. So it's a good job we are overflowing into here. So we can get 20 stored in there all the time. And then we'll put two foundries down here. So we will go with... Uh, foundry. The only thing I'll put on this side. Yeah. Let's just kind of line this up here. Place you there. Double you. And then I'm, I will have to actually use the underfloor in here. So I need to bring the crushed iron in from this machine. I'm probably going to put it on the underflooring of these foundries. Because this sulfur-free iron is going to give me 60 per minute on the iron with 60 60 120 so if we was to get down a splitter here and then bring in the 120 along there you're going to go into there and then you're going to come along here and then go into there which then means any floor holes here with a mark one to go in on the inputs and then underground i then need to i could just run it along the see actually oh i don't have ladders yet maybe i should unlock some of the ladders and stuff like as you can see i've already used a couple of coupons to unlock Kind of like my basic stuff, like the road barrier and the walkways. So let me just place these down here so I can bloody get up. I can't wait for the jetpack. And I'm so glad the jetpack's getting going to be coming earlier in 1.0. Because by the time this video releases, Snut should have released the the uh, the recipe uh, changes. And some changes that's happening in 1.0, like the trains, 
the recipe changes in regards to the trains the world changes towards the nodes which is pretty spicy so hopefully by the time this video drops you will now know about it i'm gonna have to squeeze that in there because i don't want it clipping through the belt it will fit like into there and then we need to bring this down now don't we so i need more one to come down this can just face in any direction and then if we bring these down here like so and the reason i do this is just so i can wait where's my torch oh my torch is on it just seems dark and the reason i do this here is because i put these down just so i can kind of line these up like so like this and the reason i put this splitter here as well instead of me putting the belt directly from that splitter into this one is because it won't turn as a 90 degree from where i position that one and then what i'm going to do is remove these belts again and then actually connect them so they connect to this way i'm should be putting did i put them the wrong way oh no there we go there we go so now they can connect so we want to be bringing the ore this way wait hold on a minute do i need we're bringing 90 iron in right hold up hold up hold up hold up if we're bringing 90 iron and this is consuming 30 30 we need another 30 to be spent so can i put down a smelter on the end of this to make yes we can to make an additional 45 so we're going to make 165 iron ore here so i'm going to put down a smelter on the end of this little lineup here like so and then i'm going to put down a lift here as well so we can maximize that because we obviously we can't afford to have the smelter backing up because if we the, the smelter the sorry the sorter because if the sorter backs up we're gonna have a problem because everything else will stop working right remove that one and then i can bring this in here beautiful right so that's that done so that is now 30 30 and 30 that's 90 crushed iron being done uh, let me up and now the magnesium is coming out of here uh 20 is going to go into here which means 30 and 30 is going into there so that's the 80 consumed so just to double check this is producing 40 and 40. i don't have underclocking yet otherwise i would underclock a foundry to allow 20 magnesium with some you know crushed more iron to maybe make more of a better yield than what the smelter would do which does make sense so that's all the iron that will get made just from this one sorter and then i have to think about this one because this one's magnesium is being consumed over there and we have no more magnesium which means all of the crushed iron coming out of here is just going to go into your normal smelters which is basically what we've done on every other kind of smelter line that we've done which is the sloppy iron ingots no iron ingots so it'll be 45 45 and 45 meaning 135 so this one's only given us an additional 30 iron ingots but i think what i'm going to do is this whole iron production we're going to make here this is going to go into making reinforced plates and frames because this is the whole point of this setup right the previous one gave us the basic iron recipes this one now needs to give us more advanced iron production so we can start working on iron uh, reinforced iron plates making the frames and making all the other products we're already automating as well so then we can start looking into more future products Right, so as you can see, I've now put the constructors down and I'll put the assemblers down. And what I've done is this smelter is giving me 45 iron ingots, which as we know goes into two constructors, one to consume 30, one to consume 15, which equals a total, total of 45, which one is iron plates, one is iron rods, which then iron rods get made into iron wire, which then goes to this assembler. So the iron wire and plates make reinforced iron plates. And that is what's being done with all of these sections right here. And then the iron wire mixes with the iron plates to make the reinforced iron plates at five per minute. That goes to these other two then to make more. So the back line of constructors is going plates, rods, plates, rods, plates, rods. And then the additional constructors in front of that are making the iron wire, which then goes into the assemblers with the plates to make reinforced plates. And then this end constructor here is just plates because it has nowhere to go. So that is probably just going to go into storage. And then on this side, this is where the iron, the crushed iron is coming out of the sorter into the smelters, which is doing 90 per minute. No, 135, which I'm pretty sure I just said a minute ago. That then is just going to go into something similar where it's going to make the iron wire, the iron plates, the iron sheets, all that kind of stuff, which we've done in previous videos. 
And then once it's all powered up, it looks something like this, which is basically extremely dark because I don't have anything. Uh, but now what I've done is I've got everything powered up. Everything's moving and uh, bloody grooving. And you can see that we've got the frames running now. We've also got reinforced plates coming down here. The additional plates, which I said it will go to storage, has done. And then all of this over here is making the basic products as I stated before. So we have screws. We also have the rods. We also have um, the iron sheets and then iron wire right here we're definitely going to look into more of a centralized storage uh, now that we've got this building under production so we have the copper green combined into a storage maybe we'll put it down this side on the of the building kind of separate it and then something else can go over here eventually maybe quartz because there's quartz over there i said quartz but i don't think it's quartz in this version right this mod so what i've done with the um the frames over here the frame recipe requires 10 reinforced iron plates and 40 rods so what i've done with that is over here as you can see, there is quite a few rods that are being made in this section here with the constructors. That then comes along here, goes into this constructor, which makes screws. And then the other rods go underneath the floor towards this assembler, which then makes the modular frames and the reinforced plates. This makes five. This makes five. Goes into here for ten which is what this needs right here to make the 20 modular frames per minute. So right now we only have an excess of five reinforced plates going into storage, but it's better than what we had before, which was absolutely nothing. So I'm kind of happy with this, how it's going. And then you probably notice as well, we've got the top floor under construction right now. And then I'm also bringing in the rubites from the oasis over here. So, or the waterfalls. So I've got the rubite from over there. And then the rubite from over there, just merge them together. And then we're bringing in how many lines? Two lines? One line. One line of rubite, which is going upstairs. Because we already know the rubite recipes, right? It's making zinc and lead, which is what's going to be on the top floor. But what I'm thinking about doing now is actually going into our little specials, going into the Austin shop. We have 19 coupons available. So I'm thinking about purchasing a few things that I need, especially some stuff that can give me ways of making making something like the concrete pillars that like we can get them unlocked and the modern railings like we've got all these now and then the next thing i've done as well is if we go into architecture you can see now i've got ladders i've got road barriers metal pillars all this kind of stuff and these as you know are my little essentials to like when it comes to like the whole tips and tricks of you know making curves and making all that kind of stuff where i do want to make something curves in this playthrough at some point i think i'm going to do it maybe with a design because i know like this is all biofuel over here so maybe we, when we change that to coal i then maybe do that within like a building because we're going to get so much power when we upgrade that biofuel plant to the coal plant uh, and all that kind of cool stuff and then on the top floor like i said it's just the basic bloody tin and what they called bloody and on the top floor like i said i've just done the tin setup which is what we've done in the previous videos in regards to lead and tin with 120 rubite we're just bringing in more rubite making more lead and tin basically right so now that we've got the copper tin iron lead uh then the advanced iron products i guess we could start looking into wait what am i making over oh this is zinc isn't it yeah this is the zinc plates yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, what I'm thinking about doing now is maybe bringing all this into one central storage location. And like I said, I think we should put it along, like, this area. So, maybe we'll just go with, like, zoop this out. I don't know how far we're going to need to do it. I'm just going to do, like, a simple setup because, as we know, we all, like, major, like, starter factories and stuff. It's going to get changed just because of the amount of stuff we're going to need. And this... The only thing different, I think, is that because the this mod brings in so many recipes... It's going to be like, well, bigger because tin and zinc. Normally, you're setting up for like concrete and your basic iron and your basic copper and all that stuff, right? Where now we're dealing with many, many bloody byproducts. So I'm thinking if we put like a door here um, and then we kind of barricade this off from the factory itself. Have I done that too close? I don't think I have. I think that will be fine. And then, like I said, with the, the whole stuff they need, right? You can get a road barrier now. I can place that there. Hold control by placing that there. This is one of the most things I get asked about all the time. How do you make them bloody doors, Bitsy? Wait, did I even unlock the doors? I did not. So let's get them 
Get them unlocked. Bye. Bada bing. Bada bosh. And then I can go into my walls and place the door down. So I can aim at the right one. Hold control. Flip it. Aim at that one. Control. Flip it. And now we have my door style. So I just kind of like it because even though the doors are clipping, it kind of creates like a um, like a vault door kind of, right? It's kind of cool. Like a little space age kind of door. Uh, and in regards to this, we then need to now look into the storage so I'm probably going to do it with like every foundation is going to be a um, storage container. So if we go for like here, is that that's going to be the back. And then in regards to the storage container itself, these are your... Should I put these as the power? Yeah, maybe I should put them as the power ones. Because this is an end zone, right? We're not going to be sending products from here to other products. We will cut it off just before it arrives here, more than likely. Um, so if we just tap H and then just lock that into place. And then let's say if we bring you maybe half of this foundation and then we'll do the same maybe here. So then we have this area as a walking point and that gives me enough room. It does, it's perfect, which means I can then put a floor hole there and then bring this wall along here, this side. It's like things are all done for a reason. In regards to the design, though, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't think we're going to design this building, like, yet with, like, windows and everything. I think the first building I'm going to do would be something when I'm, like, making enough limestone. Because I don't like decorating with these foundation pieces. I feel like they're terrible. But as soon as I get, like, the limestone foundations, like the concrete foundations and the, you know, the lubed concrete foundations, um, they're the ones I kind of like to use. But if we're going to be placing these storages down, like, with, a, like, every foundation, that's that's wrong, isn't it? like this i don't like the gaps in the middle so maybe we'll have to address i don't even place that straight hello Put that there. i'm not gonna start like these are the wrong way also today is a weird day every day is a weird day okay and then i can just kind of do this all the way along i'm probably gonna do this maybe till the end so how many is that gonna fit one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that will means we'll have 36 storage containers. I believe we'll fill half of that up because we've got what? Maybe seven products on the iron, seven products on the copper. Then we've got the zinc and stuff. And then maybe we'll bring over the, the bronze as well. Uh, I need to look into the bronze and what we want to do with that in regards to the bronze frames and stuff. Because if we bring up the menu... And look at bronze. We've got bronze frames and bronze ingots and stuff, right? So maybe we bring that over here as well. But in regards to these spaces, I think I'm just going to grab myself a large metal pillar and place it in the middle like this, like so. And then maybe put a light through this. Wait, I've not even unlocked lights, right? I can't even do lights because I need quartz for that, I'm going to guess, which is going to be in... Is it going to be in the mam? Are quartz in the mam this on this time? Cryolite. It is. So this is the quartz setup now. So we might have to work, make our way through that pretty, pretty soon. So if we bring these all the way across here now and then get these up, we can make some cool things. But what I also want to do is I want to bring this down by three. Bring... No, actually, no. Bring that to two. And then grab myself a conveyor pole. Place that there, raise it... No, maybe it was. Maybe it was three. And bring that to there, raise it up. Yeah, it is. Because then if I cover this, now I put that down there, right? I can place that there. Got myself a belt. It'll then attach to there. Where then, if you put items in, they'll then come along here, right? See, I kind of like doing this. And then also I like doing signs. So maybe we'll put signs here to indicate which one's which. But I want to make sure that when we're running down here from this way, we can see which items are in each container without anything else being obstructed by it. Where this is the, the most clear and visible thing, because I can see anything down there, right? But if there's any signs way down there, it's going to be very, very hard to see. I don't know why I just deleted that. But anyway, that's what we're going to do for in here. And then we need to start thinking about how we're going to belt all of this, which I feel like that could be more of a nightmare than it is. So the copper is more than likely going to go on, on the underfloor of this storage. And then the iron, I guess, could make its way down through the underflooring and then come on along this wall here, then onto the underground. Then the tin, I think it's going to be best to bring it on this side of the factory and see how that will look. 
Well, let me get to it and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've been a little busy. As you can tell, all the items are now here because magic of editing. Uh, and what a whole nightmare this was, trying to bring everything down where I once wanted to. It is the exact same position I told you I was going to do it, like the iron to come down in this area. Um, like I said, we could, we could even do some decorating to kind of hide this. For example, I can grab some uh, metal pillars and put these at the side of these kind of thing. But I'm not going to do any form of decorating just yet uh, because we are very early on uh, and things are always going to be changing like instantly. You know, so I'm probably going to do something maybe like this on the inside of this wall so it doesn't look like belts are just randomly floating down. But for now, we will just leave it and see where things lead. And then we've also got the lead coming down over here. So if we look underground, we can basically see the whole networking. And all it is is just belts, making sure they're not overlapping each other and then going into uh, lifts. Uh, that, is, that is basically it. There's no smart splitting being done. Nothing's being sent to the storage sinks. Uh, the reason being is because the storage containers themselves do power to the electricity grid to actually sync stuff for us, right? So, like, we don't need to do any of that. And obviously, we'll be sending everything to storage now. It's cleaned everything up on, like, each of the floors because the containers were just in, like, random positions, especially on this top floor. There was just belts going randomly in places. But I now need to figure out what I want to do with this big empty space here. I might just trim it and then when we do come to decorate this factory, it'll just be like an L shape on the top. But yeah, I'm happy now we've got a central storage, so I'm not going to certain different floors for certain different things. And we can just kind of come to this general location to grab what I need. And that is unfortunately where we're going to be ending this video. That is because I'm prepping this ready for uh, you guys to see when I'm on vacation. Because I'll be in Rotterdam in the Netherlands on the weekend of the 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th of June, 2024. I best emphasize that in case somebody watches this in 2025 in June, thinking I'm there that month, but 2024. So if you're there about, make sure you come and say hello. I don't bite. Uh, and if you want to have a chat, we can, we can do that as well, or even have a beer. Who knows? So like I said, if you're in the area, make sure you come and say hello. And uh, just, yeah, keep bloody smiling. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video.